I started my true crime channel back in August 2022 and by December 12th the same year I was accepted in the YouTube Partner Program. I had my concerns about this type of content so if you are thinking about starting a true crime channel then this video is for you. Let's get into the tips. Number 1. Pick a niche. If you thought true crime is a niche, you were wrong. This is a genre and it has a variety of niches to choose from. Do you want to cover solved cases or unsolved cases? Do you want to talk about missing people or serial killers? Are you interested in death penalty cases or life sentences? Don't get me wrong, you can talk about all of these and more on your channel, but in the beginning you will benefit more if you put out videos in the same niche. This will signal to the YouTube algorithm that your target audience is a specific group of people who watch a lot of videos about serial killers, for example. Therefore, your videos will be recommended to that group of people. Keep in mind that YouTube needs to build metadata regarding the content that you upload, so instead of confusing it by creating videos about a large subject with different keywords, try helping it by constantly uploading videos with the same keywords. You can slowly start to add content about other areas in the true crime genre later. Number 2. Film 5 videos. Now that you have your niche, you have to start writing scripts. It's gonna be very tempting to have your first script, then film it and then post it. Don't do that. Write 5 of them, film them, edit them, post 3 and schedule the other 2 remaining. Hear me out. If you post one single video, one of two things will happen. A. It will not get that many views, and that's normal. Remember, YouTube does not have enough data to know who to recommend your content to. Also, if it is your first ever video, it's not gonna be that good. You will have to learn how to edit, how to create a thumbnail, how to title it, and how to keep the viewer interested. That is all okay, you have to start somewhere. Avoid being demotivated by posting three videos and having two others lined up. This will give you time to be upset, sad, question the purpose of this, and then bounce back and be brave again. B. It will be a success. But think about this. You uploaded a video, it had a lot of views and a lot of engagement, people loved the content, they subscribed and then they wanted to see more. But there's only one video on your channel. They check back in a week still nothing new. See what I mean? If you have multiple videos posted and scheduled, this will keep the ball rolling and people interested. I'll give you an example. On this channel that we are right now, YouTube Growth with Alex, I posted my first video about how much YouTube paid me for my first three months being monetized. Then, for the next three months, I had nothing new to upload. My main channel was the priority, so I had to make sure that I was able to stick with my schedule there, but this ended up hurting my second channel, which is this one. I managed to get 21 subscribers after my first video, but then because I didn't post anything else new, two of them unsubscribed. That is completely understandable, and that is exactly what's gonna happen to your channel if you don't make a bulletproof plan. Set yourself up for success, have content ready for your audience, and make sure you have time to breathe until you create other great videos. Number 3 engage with the audience. Whether you get 3 comments or 300, answer them all. Come on, you have time. Acknowledge the opinions and questions of those who choose to watch your video from a variety of thousands of other videos that are suggested to them. Appreciate the fact that they took time out of their day to leave a comment on your video. If you get praises, great. If you get criticism, awesome, thank them. Learn from what they say. In fact, in the beginning, you should be happy when you receive bad comments because that right there is your opportunity to learn about what your audience wants to get from you. Be strategic and take advantage of every opportunity that you have to learn and develop new skills. Don't waste time getting depressed over bad remarks. Number 4. Do not promote your videos on your social media. Don't do it. Let YouTube gather their necessary data so that they can recommend the content to the right audience. YouTube wants you to succeed. If you do well, you keep people on the platform, therefore YouTube does well. 
When you share your videos on Facebook or with your friends or family, they will maybe watch one video and not all the way through. This will hurt your channel more than it will help because YouTube will believe that your video is not that good since people are clicking on it but they are not staying to watch it. Now, in order to be monetized, you will need 4,000 watch hours and 1,000 subscribers. When you get to 990 subscribers, then you can ask your friends and family to help you out and subscribe. But keep that as a last resort. Number five, stay consistent. Whatever you do, don't give up. Roberto Blake, who is a very successful YouTuber and you may have heard of him, said that we should post 100 crappy videos before thinking about giving up. Your first video will be different from your 50th, which will be light years away from your 100th video. You will get better at editing, at giving titles, at creating thumbnails, but that's gonna happen by practicing. It's inevitable, you just really have to put in the work. Now let's go over some best practices when it comes to true crime content. Number one, do your research. Do not post inaccurate information. You will make mistakes, that's not what I'm talking about. But take your information from official sources, not from blogs or other people's videos. If they get it wrong, you will too and it's not worth it just for saving some time. You will not build an audience if you share inaccurate info. Keep in mind that the people who will watch your videos already have a lot of knowledge in this genre. They are passionate and they read a lot. You will lose credibility if you share the wrong details about a case. Number two, be respectful towards the victims, the families, and even the criminals. We know the details that were presented in the media or in the official documentation, but we don't actually know it all and we have no idea what the personal circumstances of those people were. Share your opinion, but try to remain aware that you are talking about real human beings that found themselves in often tragic situations. And I'm talking about the victims, the criminals, and both their families. The family of a death row inmate is suffering too, so don't ever forget that. Number three, don't share 100% of what you find. Use your best judgment. Some details are better left unshared. You are trying to educate an audience about the circumstances of a case. You are not trying to scar them for life. If anyone wants to learn the gruesome details, they can do their own research, okay? This is very much related to the previous point that we talked about. The people who lost loved ones don't need to hear every single detail or worse, see pictures of what happened back then. Now, if you are curious to know of how much you can expect to earn in your first three months with a true crime channel, watch this video on the screen next. I hope this video was helpful for you. See you next time. Bye-bye.